Unlike other consumer products that are focused only on U.S. and Canadian companies, if you're lucky, we have a full global data set. Also, if you browse the menus, what you'll see is that we have over a thousand preset screener criteria, and in, in addition, you're able to create complex composite uh, algorithms and complex composite formulas that let you create your own screener conditions on top of our pre-built conditions. So let's build a sample screen that's relevant to us here. Let's try to find some attractively valued technology companies. So the first thing we're going to do is limit our scope to the technology sector. Next, we want to eliminate micro-cap companies or other very, very small companies from the list. So let's get rid of any company with a market capitalization of less than 10 million and limit ourselves to only those with greater than 10 million market caps. Next, I know a lot of the risk-loving angel investors in this room like companies and are willing to invest in companies that aren't necessarily profitable yet. But for the sake of this screen, let's look at only companies that have positive net income in the most recent interim period. Now, here's where things start to get interesting. What you're able to do is define complex custom formulas for your, as your screener conditions that use our pre-built uh, data points. So you're able to look for companies that have a total revenue per employee of greater than $500,000, even though that's not a built-in uh, indicator within our data set. We have revenue and employees, and you can create the formula of revenue for employee. What this is designed to do is eliminate a lot of the uh, less interesting low-margin services and manufacturing firms from this particular screen. So next, let's look at the valuation metric and what we define as attractively valued. For the sake of this screen, let's set it as an enterprise value to EBITDA ratio of less than 10. A lot of investors use enterprise value to EBITDA as an alternative to price earnings as it lets you value the underlying business somewhat apart from the capital structure. So current enterprise value to EBITDA is a built-in indicator and you're able to use it here. Finally, we want to look at the health of the balance sheet and we want to make sure that the company is unburdened by a heavy debt load. So let's use a pretty conservative screen and make sure that the total debt in the most recent financial statement is going to be less than their annual EBITDA. Very, very conservative metric. The reason we're not requiring total debt to be zero is in this low interest rate environment, a lot of companies are taking on additional uh, debt to bolster their balance sheets for acquisitions or other strategic opportunities that they may want to pursue in the future. If you happen to be one of those companies, remember, Screener.co is our product, uh, and that's what you're seeing right now. So if we sort our results in descending market capitalization, so we see the largest companies that people are most likely to be familiar with first in the list, you'll see that Microsoft, Intel, and RIM are all prominently displayed in this screen. Now, Microsoft and Intel, as you know, have been posting strong quarterly numbers recently, but their strong duopoly position in the personal computer market hasn't necessarily translated into an equally strong position in the tablet and mobile markets that are in increasingly representing the future of computing devices. So that may be one of the reasons why they're trading at a bit of a discount. So let's compare the, ones result, the results from our current screen to some other technology companies that people here may be familiar with. Let's try Google, Apple, and Yahoo. And we can create in our stock list view uh, any stock symbols that we want to enter uh, from the data set in any of the global companies. And once we've added those companies, what we're going to do is use a different view, one of the pre-built views, that looks at valuation, growth, and efficiency metrics. And we're going to change that view in both the results set as well as the stock list view so that we can compare the companies that were returned by our screen to those that we know about and want to, uh, want to look as a point of reference. What you'll see is that the enterprise value to EBITDA ratio for Google, Apple, and Yahoo is significantly, significantly higher than that for uh, Microsoft and Intel. In addition, if you look at the revenue per employee numbers, Google's revenue, or uh, Apple's rather, revenue per employee at 1.4 million is roughly twice that of Microsoft. Now, if you want to question one of the reasons why they're more highly valued, if you scroll to the right in the stock list view, you can see some of the growth metrics. And you'll see Apple has been posting very strong growth uh, trailing 12 months over the prior trailing 12 months, over 60%, which is incredibly impressive for a company of their scale. Whereas if you look at the growth metrics for Microsoft and uh, for Intel, they're impressive, but not 60%. Um, if you can, unfortunately, we don't have private company data in our data set, but if you were to look at Facebook, for example, at a $50 billion valuation with their estimated $2 billion of revenue, they're trading at 25 times their revenue, trailing revenue, whereas uh, Google even is valued at 14 times tra its trailing EBITDA, or its profitability metric. There's many more data points in this data set, and the views are fully customizable. So uh, if you want to see more, please stop by our, our booth. Um, to, to close, uh, we are screener.co. We are a uh, free public beta until April 1st, and everyone here is welcome to join. And then it'll be approximately $24.95 a month is what we're shooting for. We're running a referral program where you can refer friends during the beta period. If they become paying customers, we'll give you 10 bucks. My contact information is above. Feel free to stop by our booth. We'd like to talk with you. Thank you very much. Awesome.